Hello. Newson Garrett was a successful Victorian businessman with 11 children, including two remarkable daughters. One was Millicent. Now, she grew up to be Millicent Fawcett, the famous suffragette, and to this day the only woman to have her statue in Parliament Square in London. But I'm going to be talking about her older sister, Elizabeth. Born in 1839, Elizabeth was interested in maths and science and chemistry. In 1859, she attended a lecture given by Elizabeth Blackwell, the first woman to qualify as a doctor in the United States. Well, Elizabeth was inspired. She decided that she too would become a doctor. But perhaps at that point, she had no idea just how difficult that was going to be for her. Because the Victorians had a problem with a combination of women and medicine. To start with, why would a respectable woman want to be in close proximity strangers, especially men, without a chaperone? And then there was the issue of the sensibilities and delicacy of a middle-class woman. How could she possibly be expected to cope with disease, illness, sickness and blood? Well, that was quite hypocritical because Victorian women were expected to look after the sick, the injured and the dying. Now, fortunately for Elizabeth, nursing itself was more acceptable as a profession. And this allowed her to get a bit of a toehold on a medical career because in 1860, she obtains a position as a surgical nurse at Middlesex University Hospital. She's obviously liked and Middlesex are actually quite enlightened. They allow Elizabeth to take private lessons in medical subjects and even to attend lectures in dissection and anatomy. And it's here that Elizabeth runs into trouble because it's the male students who can't cope with the idea of a woman in their midst. They're outraged and they complain vociferously to university who are reluctantly forced to bar Elizabeth. Undaunted, she applies to nearly every good medical institution and college in the country, only to be rebuffed by each in turn. Well, what to do? Fortunately, Elizabeth had found a loophole, a historical loophole, that allowed her to get some more medical training. That loophole was the Worshipful Society of Apothecaries, one of the City of London's ancient guilds or trade companies. It received its charter back in 1617 from James I and it was allowed to examine its members who could obtain a licence to become medical practitioners. And what was really interesting from Elizabeth's point of view is that that same charter did not specify that you had to be a man. She applied and the Society of Apothecaries were not in a position to refuse her. In 1865, she took her examinations and qualified as a medical practitioner. The apothecaries weren't very happy. The following year, they closed that loophole so no woman could follow her. Now, I think rejection by all those universities and colleges had stung. Because when Elizabeth hears that the dean of the medical faculty at the Sorbonne, the University of Paris, is sympathetic to the idea of women doctors, she pulls out her French textbooks and sets to studying. It's not easy, but we find her in 1870 undertaking that rather scary examination in a second language. She passes and becomes the first woman to receive a medical degree from the University of Paris. Now this is even more remarkable when you bear in mind that she's been working Because in 1865, she takes her qualification as a medical practitioner and opens her own practice in Harley Street. In the same year, she also opens a dispensary for the poor at another site. But the idea of a woman doctor still doesn't sit easily with the Victorians. And it must be said that the patients didn't initially flood in. But here again, history was on Elizabeth's side. London was in the throes of a terrible epidemic of cholera, the so-called Blue Death. And unsurprisingly, people's scruples evaporated. They didn't mind being treated by a woman in the face of this terrifying contagion. Now, Elizabeth Garrett goes from strength to strength, achieving a number of firsts. 
including being the first woman to become a member of the British Medical Association and the first woman to hold an official medical post at a doctor at a hospital. She becomes a bit of a celebrity. In 1870, when she is the first woman to be on a school board, she's the subject of a rather fine caricature that appears in the press. Now, in 1871, Elizabeth Garrett marries and becomes Elizabeth Garrett Anderson. But she doesn't allow motherhood or wifehood to get in the way of her profession. She keeps on practising. But she does eventually retire to Aldborough in Suffolk. And it's completely typical of this woman that she doesn't rest on her laurels, because in 1908, she becomes the first woman to be the mayor of a British town or city. She dies in 1917. Now, the Worshipful Society of Apothecaries is still there. They have a fine hall in Blackfriars, and they're quite a different institution today because women are welcome. Indeed, there's a rather fine portrait of Elizabeth Garrett Anderson hanging on their wall. And interestingly enough, another one of their well-known graduates is a certain Agatha Christie, who went on to put her knowledge of chemicals and poisons to very good use in her future career. Well, next week I'm going to be talking about another determined, resilient woman. Thank you for listening. <laughs>